Hi, I welcome you all guys for the session of the CSS. So today we're going to see the second technology that is used for developing UI, right? So we have already made with the HTML. We're going to start with CSS and what is this CSS is. CSS full form, as you can see on the, my, uh, you can see a screen, and that is nothing but cascading style shape. But I'm so many here from Think Question Software Private Limited. Now today we're gonna learn about cascading style sheets. Now why we have to learn this cascading style sheet? So that we'll see definitely. But before that, let's have a look on the syllabus that we are going to cover today. So very first, we're gonna see what is CSS, CSS versions, syntaxes to include the CSS to write the CSS, right? So how many ways we can write CSS or we can say types of CSS, CSS properties, and so on. So for now, what we are doing going for the thing is now very first we'll start with the question what is CSS? Now just now we have seen the full form of CSS, right? The CSS stands for cascading style sheet. So cascading style sheet is nothing but it, it is a language to describe the presentation of your HTML element. So whenever you want the look and you want to make up your HTML document in that in that case you have to go with the CSS so CSS is nothing but I can compare the CSS with um, interior decorator so basically if you're going to buy a house in that case the house is going to be plain right so you want to paint your walls you want to decorate your house so in that case you we call an interior des designer so the same thing Till now we have created only the HTML page, right? Using the HTML page we have created and colorless website, right? So today we're gonna see how to build website using this CSS, how to apply some responsiveness, some colors and some attractive uh, look to our web page so that user can get attracted towards it and he'll stay on it. Right. So this is the CSS. This is what the CSS is all about. So whenever you want to change the appearance and look of your HTML element, you should have the CSS. Now, let's have a look on who is the founder of CSS and when he founded it and CSS versions now. So very first thing is CSS was first proposed by Hakum Vikum Lee on October 10, 1994. So basically CSS concept was introduced in 1994 but css first version was introduced in 1996 so first version of css we got in 1996 december 1996 but css concept was came into a market in the 1994 right so we got css2 in 1998 so we got css 2.1 in 2011 we got css3 in 2017 so currently we are using the concept we are using the css version is css3 that is released in 2017 right now we'll just move ahead and we'll see the how we can write the syntax for css right so uh syntax of writing css is nothing but a simple way of selecting any particular element so i'll call it as the selector and you have to specify property and value pair and close this and uh, curly braces right so that is okay now you're okay with the syntax now you know how to write it right and why we are learning this css but very first question now where you will be where we will be writing this css so when we were learning html we were using notepad right so I don't need any specific IDE or any specific installation for, for any software to learn this HTML CSS. So if we, if you have CSS, if you have Notepad with you, you can directly start learning the HTML and CSS concepts. But for now, for the simplicity, instead of me writing all the code, we will be using any IDE. In the IDE, you can use either sublime either you can use notepad you can use atom visual studio code there of n there are n number of uh, softwares available in the market but for the for now i will be using the sublime it's of your choice you can use visual studio code you can use notepad plus 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 you can use atom but for me i will be using the sublime now let's have a look the example how you have to write the uh, CSS. So very first thing is we have to select any selector. We know what is this H1 now. 
it is heading tag right so h1 till h6 we have got heading tags any of them you can select it's not restricted that you have to select only h1 h2 h3 till h6 it's okay if you want to select p tag if you want to select suppose you want to select div tag you want to select suppose any other tags you can select that one also so basically selector is going to be your element selector any element from your html you can select now in the example i have selected h1 and i have applied some css now css is nothing but changing the appearance of your html element right so basically my h1 was appearing in the black color now after applying my css now you can see i have applied a css called as a color colon red so now my h1 tag will appear in red now this is the way how we write the css but actually there are three ways in which we can write CSS or in other words, it, we, you may meet with, meet with the question called, I mean, how many ways we can use CSS in how many ways we can include CSS into your HTML web page, right? Now, so there are basically three ways to include your CSS. So first is inline CSS, second is internal CSS, third is external CSS, right? So answer for your question is, so how many ways we can use CSS there are three ways to use the CSS. First is inline CSS, internal CSS, and third is external CSS. Let's have a look on uh, internal CSS, inline CSS, and external CSS. For the same, I will be using the Sublime Text Editor. That is of your choice if you want to use your Visual Studio Code, if you want to use Notepad++, I will be using the Sublime. So I'll directly move into the Sublime and let's start coding for the scene. I'll just go over here and I'll search sublime. The installation is very easy. For the same, I'll be sharing this file for you, the installation steps. I'll open the same file over here and working with a folder called online station. So I'll just create, I'll just open that one. So I'll go into the desktop, online station, select the folder. Right? Now you can see the folder is being opened and I'm going to code over here right so very first thing is i'm going to save the file with some extension so i'm going to say css first dot html we know we have to store the file with the extension called html or htm i'm going to save the file and you are now able to get the intelligence or if we can say intelligence from the visual studio code or the sublime whichever text editor you are using right now now if you want to get the boilerplate code, so basically we have we know the skeleton, the fixed skeleton. First doc type declaration we know head tag, then you HTML tag, then you have to define head tag, then you have to define body tag, right? So this is nothing but a boilerplate code. I'm I want it to be automatically generated by the software, right? So what you have to do is simply angle bracket, exclamatory mark. I'm going to say or instead of that I can say HTML and you can hit enter to this HTML and now you can see the boilerplate code is being added into my software or into my file right now let's have a look suppose if I'm going to write over your h1 if I say hello and welcome to CSS I'll just save the file now how to run the code so simply what you have to do is you have to right click over here. You have to say open in browser. Whatever your default browser you have, that browser will open with your files. Okay. Now you can see I'm, I'm able to get hello and welcome to CSS. Right. Now, so we know there are three ways to include CSS. So very first is inline, internal and external. Let's start with inline CSS. So inline CSS, some part of inline CSS we have already covered in HTML. So let's have a look on that. So inline CSS is nothing but writing the style attribute, writing the style attribute inside the opening tag. So I'm going to specify style over here, style. And if I want to change color of my text, so I'm going to say color property and I'm going to say, so it is going to be a property now. So you have to separate property and value using this colon right suppose i want to have this in the green color so i'm going to add green color save the file head back to the browser refresh the page and you can see everything is in the 
blue color my h1 is turning towards the h color right green color right now this is nothing my internal inline css now i want to change it to something else like i want to add some more properties so i'm going to say text transform i'm going to say uppercase let's save the file head back to the browser refresh the page and you can see hello and welcome to css is being displayed in the capital letters right now these are the few properties don't worry about these properties we're gonna see all of them one by one let's start with internal css so we have seen how to apply inline css inline css is nothing but writing the style attribute in the opening tag of the content right now let's try to include the internal css to include the internal css what you have to do is you have to simply go over here you have to write style tag and you have to write whatever styling you want to apply to the element over here right so before that i'll just explain you what is this style tag explains so style tag is nothing but your styling the way you want to change the content or uh, appearance so whatever you want to write inside this inline that you can replace and uh, you that you can cut and paste into the style tag so basically style tag has to be written inside the head tag generally because we don't want to display our logic to the browser to the user or to the browser on the browser so basically those those things those you don't want to display to the user that we used to write in the head tag right so i am going to include this style tag inside the head tag now this type attribute itself suggests so type itself is an attribute of style tag so type attribute suggests i am going to write the css uh, code i'm going to write the css code that is going to be in the format of text so i'm going to write the css document but that will be in the format of text it is optional if you want to write it you can continue if you don't want to write it you can remove the thing but good developer standards and coding standards suggest to include this type attribute now whatever style we have applied over here let's remove from this i'm going to say control c over here i'm going to copy the same control c i'm going to paste it for again i'll just make the comment it out and let's remove this style from this please right now let's try to apply the same thing using the internal css so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the element selector so to have element selector we simply have to pick this h1 outside so i'm going to write over here h1 i want to style now for the h1 so i'm going to write h1 and i want to apply some styling to apply si styling you have to write curly brace over here opening curly braces and closing curly braces whatever styling you want to apply that you can write over here so i'm going to write color color property i want to apply and i'm going to say let's take yellow let's save the file and let's check on the browser what we are getting so this is our previous output let's refresh the page and you can see we are getting hello and welcome to css in the yellow color so basically we are now able to apply internal styling so i'll just right in the comments i'm going to you write okay so i cannot write over here why i'll tell you because i'm writing the css code and the way we comment in css is different so how to add comments in css is forward slash and star star forward slash so this is the way how we can add the comments in css so i'm going to write over here internal way of adding css over here i'm going to write control forward slash is a shortcut to add the comments inline way of adding css now we are clear with internal css right we are clear with inline css next let's have look for external css right so as we know external css is nothing but adding the css from external side right so 
external side is nothing but we have to get it from some other file right so to get it from the other file i have to create a new file so simply i'm going to say file new file over here or simply you can use the shortcut control n so i'm using the uh, new file over here i'm going to save it first so to save the file i'm going to say my styles dot css because now we are going to write css programming or css coding right now so to have the css code we have to save the file with called dot css extension right so i am saving the file with dot css now let's save the file now very first thing is we are not dealing with html now we are dealing with css to have the css we don't have to write this angle bracket h1 or anything right so you do not write this do not include this html into your css dot css file simply whatever concepts you have applied over here so i'll just copy this or instead i'll just control x from this place i'll remove that whole uh, i can say a code i'll paste it over here and you are done with your external css file right the way we have added internal same we can uh, have in the external file so what i have added is i have picked up the selector over here i have added this angle curly brace over here i have added the css property and i have closed this curly brace over here now next task is to include the same external file into our html file now let's include the same file using this link tag so to include the external file you have to use the link tag so i'll come into over here forward slash star star forward slash okay i have to include inside the style okay so this is the way how you comment in css so i have to include the link at links tag so i'm just going to specify way of adding external css instead of that what i'll do is i'll include this into the html so i'll just remove it i'll just remove this line i'll just paste it over here external way okay, i'll just way of adding external css or external css external way of adding css right now to have this we know we have to include the link uh, link tag so i'm going to include the link tag and link tag have some attributes and those attributes nothing but relation and type now we are okay with type right so we are going to write text type of document that is nothing but css and we know we have to add the relation of the document that we are going to include so whatever document we are going to include my style.css that is nothing but style sheet for my html document now what is this style sheet style sheet is nothing but a content or the program that is going to describe how your html element should look or how your html should appear on the web page right so basically when you are going to change the styling of your web page in that case you have to write the css and we are writing the css over here so this is the third way of writing css in the document and that is nothing but your external css so i have included over here link tag link tag doesn't have closing tag so you can use the in end tag over here or you can skip this step also i'm adding this type is equals to text type of document i'm adding that is nothing but css over here and i'm going to have this relationship of the particular the style sheet and my html document that is nothing but style sheet right now href href is the attribute to specify the path of your uh, file so simply i'm going to say my style dot css because my style dot css file is in the same folder of html file right so because html file and the css file both files are in the same folder so you can directly add the name let the browser refresh the page and you can see we are getting now let's save the file head back to the browser refresh the page and you can see the expected output hello and welcome to css is applied with yellow color right now so we are able to figure it out in how many ways we can apply css so very first way is inline css 
second way is internal CSS and third way is external CSS. Now how we can apply the CSS or uh, very first we'll start with the inline CSS. How we can apply inline CSS is nothing but I'm saying style attribute inside the opening tag of the content and you can apply some CSS properties that is that is nothing but color green text transform uppercase right so these are the CSS properties that we are applying over here so for now I'm going to remove this uppercase let's start with the single property first so h1 style is equal to color colon green and I'm going to save the file now let's try to add internal CSS and over here I'm going to say h1 I want to apply a color and I'm going to say pink okay and the same time I'm, I have added this external file also in which I have added my style.css file color yellow. Let's save the file and head back to the browser. What will happen if I'm adding these all three CSS types at a time, right? So let's the page and you can see green color is being applied. So basically what is happening is our HTML document executes line by line, right? Our HTML document executes line by line. So the moment I reach over here, I get to know that color I have to apply pink. So the system has applied or the browser has applied green pink color over here, right? The moment he turns to the next line, next line, again he found some external file over here, and that external file is nothing but my style.css. He'll go into my style.css and he'll apply the yellow color to the content. Right? Now he'll just come back into the file and he'll just move to the next line next line and again that person that browser can see browser system can see I'm changing color again and I'm setting it to green that's why I'm getting over here green color clear now if I comment this line so basically I'm not going to apply inline CSS now let's check if I'm applying internal CSS and external CSS so which CSS will get applied over here save the file Head back to the browser and refresh the page. You can see yellow color is being applied and that is nothing but our external file. Now why this external CSS file is being applied? Because color pink and after that we are reading this external CSS file. That's, that's why yellow color is being applied. Now what if I remove this and if I paste it above this style tag save the file head back to the browser and you can see the pink color is being applied right so we can conclude with we can uh, come up with the two points we can conclude over here for the two points so very first thing is the more preference is for inline css after that you can have internal or inline so for the first preference is for inline css and after that internal internal or external depending on the condition and the second thing is HTML document executes line by line so you cannot switch in between those statements right so now we are I'm on the first plane and now the flow goes to the tenth number line no it is not possible if you're standing at first row you have to move to the next row that is nothing but line number two line number three and likewise right so we can conclude two points HTML document executes line by line internal and external more than internal and external CSS inline CSS having CSS is having more preference right now let's move ahead and have a look what is our next thing now let's start the selectors selectors in CSS let's have a definition selectors are patterns used to select the elements you want to style right so selectors are patterns used to select the elements you want to style so nothing but what it is saying is the way we have used the element selector right so what we have selected is element selector element selector is nothing but h1 h1 you are picking it h2 you are picking it you are applying some styling using this internal inline or external styling that is nothing but selector so we have got some types of selectors let's have a look on that so very first type is id selector second is class selector Third is universal selector and fourth is element selector that we have already seen, right? So very basic fundamental of selectors is most number of times we are using this ID selector and class selector, right? So what is the difference between this ID selector and class selector is 
id selector is going to be unique for each and every element just like suppose i'm taking admission into some classes or some schools over there i am getting my own roll number right so that roll number is not repeated for my other other friends right so that particular roll number is nothing but my unique identification in my classroom so basically in a single classroom in single classroom we can have n number of students but in that n number of students can have single id students right so basically each student will get unique identification id so id in your html document is going to be single right so you can use only one id selector in your html document right so um class selector let's talk about class selector so i have not just now uh, explained an example in which i have said in a single class i can have n number of students right so class can be applied to n number of multiples of html elements right so you can use class selector on multiple elements but you can use single id selector for the single element right now we'll have a practical for the same but before that let's continue with universal selector universal selector is nothing but when you want to apply styling to your html element to all your html element then you should go with the universal selector now i'll just move back into my code i'll just try to apply an id selector and class selector for the same i will be creating a new file over here let's save the file now i'm going to say selectors CSS dot HTML over here. So let's have our first. I'm going to say angle bracket HTML. Let's get the boiler code first. Now let's have the selector. So I'm going to add over here H1 and I'm going to say I am ID selector example. Let's close this H1 also. Right now let's have again one div tag over here and i'm going to say div, div tag let's have am um, the example example for let's say class selector so i'm going to say class selector right now i'll just have again a div tag that will specify hello um example for class selector right so let's save the file now you have to add id and you have to add class so id and class itself are attributes so basically to add the id what you have to do is you have to go in the opening tag of the content that you wanted to apply id so i'm in the opening tag of h1 i'm going to specify id is equal to you can give any unique name so i'm going to save one over here let's save the file and for this i want to apply some styling right so i want to apply styling for id selector so very first i should have some id now i am applying id over here let's have styling over here so i am for now i'm going to use internal way of applying styling so i'm going to write style tag over here inside that i'm going to specify i have got an id i want to have i want to add some styling for the same so if you want to have styling for the id you have to represent id using hash so if you're going to specify hash then and then only the browser will came to know hash is nothing but my id so i have to search for the id attribute in my html document it will search for the id attribute now i have to specify id name so i'm going to specify one and done the browser will understand i have to search for some id and whose id's name is one i have to search so the moment i'm get, going to get the same output same result so that css will be applied to this content right so let's try to add some content so let's try to add some css over here i'm going to say i want to apply color and that color is nothing but suppose let's say i want to apply blue i want to apply blue let's save the file and I'm going to say copy file path because it is going to open in the Chrome. 
uh, Internet Explorer and I like the Chrome. Right. And you can see our styling is being applied using this ID selector. Right. So I am ID selector content is being displayed in blue color. Right. So let's have a look again in the code. So what I did is ID ID should be unique. ID is always going to be only one. If I want to apply some more IDs, yes, definitely you can apply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste again the same code, but I'm going to change ID. So I'm going to say ID to save the file, head back to the browser. And if you can see an ID selector example, but there is no such color is being applied, right? If you want to apply color to the ID, so you have to again write the same syntax as I'm going to apply CSS to ID, I have to represent ID using hash. And now my ID name is two, and I'm going to specify color. I'm going to say, let's take red. Save the file, head back to the browser, refresh the page. You can see the color is being applied, right? Now, let's have a look for this class selector. So what is the use of this class selector is, so whenever you want to apply multiple classes, or the same classes to the multiple elements, you can apply the classes over here. So you can, you should go with the class. So I'm going to add this class attribute and I have to specify some name. So I'm going to say common as a name. You can apply anything, you can use any name. So I'm going to use this again. I'll say control C. I'll paste it over here again so that my two code, so, so two lines of code can have same styling, whatever I'm going to apply. So let's save the file and let's apply some styling over here. Now, if you want to represent classes in the CSS, you have to use dot over here. So dot represents classes. So I'm going to use dot. A class name is nothing but common. Let's have some styling over here. I'm going to say color and if I say over here green, save the file, head back to the browser, refresh the page. You can see both the contents, both the text are in the uh, green color, right? Both the lines are in the green color here. So this is the way how you should use the class selector and ID selector. Right. So we are not made with the universal selector. We'll definitely make with it. But now let's try to figure it out the difference between the class selector and ID selector. So very first point is ID selector should be applied to only one element in HTML document. Right. And you can apply class selector to the multiple elements in the HTML document. Now, if I want to apply two classes to single uh, what, it, what you can say an element so you can apply suppose I want to have one more class called as an spatial and let's take I'm going to apply over your font let's take style I'm going to say italic over here I want to apply let's don't worry about the CSS properties whatever I'm going to write over here let's keep in mind how to apply two classes to a single element right so I'm going to save the file let's apply this spatial class also I'm going to give a space over here and write spatial save the file head back to the browser and refresh the page and you can notice two classes are being applied to my single uh, we can say element right italic as well as green color right so I'm able to apply two classes on the single element clear so till now we have seen how many ways to include CSS how many types of selectors we do have in that most number of times we will be using this ID selector and class selector let's have a look and how many ways we can specify colors so colors can be specified by color names color values in values we can specify the color using rgb values rgb stands for red green blue next hex values nothing but hash codes of your colors third is u saturation lightness hsl values you can add rgba you can have hsla so what is this a stands for alpha right so basically color names you can directly specify the colors that we can we have already seen using the color names that is nothing but red green blue black white yellow magenta 
you can specify tomato color you can say lime green color so these are the color names that you can directly specify other way you can specify the color values so you have to specify color values in five ways you can specify in five ways so very first is rgb values hsl rgba and hsla right now let's have a look for b first let's move back into the code and let's have a look so i have created a file over here colors demo.html in that what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this h1 and that h1 i'm going to say i want to apply color right so i'm going to say um, suppose i say hello and i'm going to say this is this is color css color demo so i'm going to say css color demo so what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply a color in the background of this h1 right so for that purpose if you want to apply color in the background so what you have to do is simply you have to use css property and i'm going to use internal styling so for that i'm going to use style at style tag over here style tag and you have to include the element selector my element is nothing but h1 and this color in that i'm going to specify my css properties right and the very first css property i'm going to specify is background color i want to apply background color let's apply background color over here and in that background color you can specify rgb values or you can specify directly names or you can specify directly hsl values hsla values rgba values and hex values so let's start with the directly color names so i'm going to specify over here to my to color let's save the file and let's run this file again so i'm going to open the chrome i'm going to say ctrl v for this and you can see tomato color is being applied right hello this is css color demo you can see the color is being applied let's take i'm going to apply instead of tomato i'm going to apply pure red color save the file get back to the browser refresh the page and you can see the red color is being applied now let's copy the same content over here for at least five times five to six times right so very first thing is i have applied background color to the h1 tag and let's have a look what will happen so each and every element will have background color as red right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply apply in line styling over here so i'm going to specify style i'm going to specify red stake background color and i'm going to specify color in the rgb so rgb i'm going to specify first uh, number so first number is going to be let's take 255 so this range of color so first first number stands for red second number is going to stand for green and third is nothing but blue so combination of these three values or three integers will result to your uh, content right so i'll just save the file let's have a look 255 255 255 is nothing but our white color let's have a look over here refresh the page and you can see background color white is being applied right now let's have a look if what if i uh, specify 255 instead i'll specify zero zero over here zero over here and zero over here let's have a look zero is nothing but black color and refresh the page you can see black color is being applied so no content is being displayed so let's change the content color i'm going to specify color colon white so i want to have my text into the white color but keep in mind how i specified this property in inline because whenever you have n number of properties or i can say more than one property you can separate them using this semicolon right if you don't give the semicolon but if the same page you can see the red color is being applied so you have to specify these properties using this semicolon and refresh the page the background black color is being applied and the content color is nothing but white clear i hope you are clear with this now let's add rgba i'm going to apply inline styling so i'm going to say style attribute over here i'm going to say background color in that background color i'm going to specify rgba 
so first integer first number that you're going to specify stands for red color second stand for green color third for blue and last one is for alpha now what is this alpha alpha is nothing but an number between 0 to 1 0 to 1 that is nothing but transparent right so sometimes we see the color is faint out right so this is faint so transparent we can say so whenever you want to add some transparency into your background you have to apply alpha so i'm going to specify i want to have gray shirt so i'm going to say 0 0 0 and i'm going to specify 0 0.5 so you have to apply an alpha in between 0 to 1 because alpha cannot have value more than 1 Let's save the file, head back to the browser, but we need to change the color of text also. I'm going to color change the color of text. I'm going to apply it to white. Save the file, head back to the browser. As you can see, gray color is being applied over here and the text is in the white color. I hope you all are clear with this, right? So how many ways we are applying this CSS colors? So very first way, way we have applied using this direct name color value. Right. Second, we have applied using this RGB. Second way is nothing but RGBA. And next, we will be applying this style. Easy for so I'm going to say background color. And I'm going to specify this HSL values. So first, integer that whatever you are going to specify is stands for you. Second is nothing but saturation. And third is nothing but lightness. So first, view is nothing but it is a degree on the color wheel so degree of color wheel is nothing but 0 to 360 degrees right so basically when you have 0 degrees 0 is nothing but red 120 is nothing but green and 240 is nothing but blue so i'm going to apply a green color i'm going to specify 120 over here because i know 0 stands for red 120 stands for green and 240 is nothing but my blue color so i want to have green color shade i have applied 120 over here now next value is going to be your saturation saturation is nothing but a percentage value now what, what kind of percentage value is so whenever you want to apply a gray color shade we mix with color right so we, we, we do mix with colors and whenever you want to apply gray color shade in that case you should apply saturation and you can apply saturation from zero percent and hundred percent so i'm going to apply zero percent over here let's take i'm applying zero percent over here and shade of gray right if i'm going to specify 30 so in that case 30 thoda sa light thoda sa darker in that case uh, my gray color will be applied now next is i'm going to apply let's take i'm going to apply next is lightness right so lightness to specify the lightness what i'm going to use is again percentage right so to apply a percentage what you have to do is zero stands for black 50 percent neither darker color neither light color right and 100 is nothing but white color so let's have a look on white color around white color so i'm going to add 90 percent over here and let's save the file head back to the browser and refresh the page you can see some sort of green of white color you can see some sort of green color is being applied over here let's make some changes to have a look over here and i'm going to specify instead of 90 i'll just specify 30 over here because zero is black and 100 is white let's refresh the page and you can see the green color some sort of green color green shade is being applied over here right i hope you all are clear with uh, hsl right hsl we have seen only hsl let's have a look for the HSL A. Before moving to HSL A, let's have a look. What is this HSL stands for? U, saturation and lightness. U is nothing but a degree will, which will hold a value 0 for red, 120 for green, and 240 for blue. Saturation is nothing but a percentage value. 0% stands for shade of gray, and 100% is nothing but your full color right so lightness lightness is also percentage zero percent is nothing but black color 50 percent is nothing but neither dark neither light 100 percent is nothing but 
white color so you can make your own imagination and your own your tryouts to have varieties of uh, mixing of these colors and that is all up to you now let's move ahead and have a look of hsl a so i'm going to write style going to say background color over here background color hsl a and i'm going to apply the same thing same 120 instead of 120 i'll just go with red color now, now to apply the red color we know zero degree zero is nothing but red zero degree is nothing but red so i'm going to say red color i want to apply right saturation a percentage value a shade of gray i want to apply some shade of gray and that is nothing but 30 percent 30 percent and i want to have lightness in the form of let's say zero instead of zero i'll just specify 20 over here 20 percent so because i want to have some dark color so that i can show you the effect of alpha uh, in, if, if not so i cannot show you the effect of alpha let's have value 0.5 and close this parenthesis save the file head back to the browser if i go over here and refresh the page and you can see some sort of gray color is being applied right some sort of gray color is being applied now let's have a look last but not the least you can apply hex values over here so simply i'm going to apply any random values because i'm not i haven't mug up the values i'm going to say style is equal to i want to apply some hex values so i'm going to say i want to apply a color instead of color i must have say uh, i must have said uh, background color in this second control said background color over here hash and i'm going to say 56 i'm going to say f2 and if i say f2 again i'll just save the file and head back to the browser let's have a look which type of color is being applied and you can see some sort of blue shade it is being applied right i hope you all are clear with the colors in the css how to apply css colors background colors in how many ways we can apply colors right so there are total six ways we can apply colors so very first thing is directly color name value and you can say suppose tomato light green dark green light gray dark gray black color green color so if you know the color name directly you can specify the color name so second way we have seen this background color if you want to apply in the form of rgb so you have to specify red green blue color so 255 255 255 is nothing but my white color and 000 is nothing but my black color in hsl you so we have seen rgb a also in rgba we have kept the same thing but we have applied alpha value alpha value we can specify in the range of 0 to 1 only you cannot be on uh, extend the range uh, beyond one so you have to specify the value between the zero and one so i have applied 0.5 over here you can try it out for 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 right now alpha is nothing but transparency zero is nothing but fully transparent and one is nothing but uh, not transparent so one is nothing but pure color now next hsl hsl stands for u saturation and lightness u is nothing but the degree of your color wheel right zero degree is nothing but red color 120 degree is nothing but green color 240 is nothing but blue color so next is nothing saturation saturation is a percentage value zero percentage means shade of gray that you want to mix with and 100 percent is nothing but full color so there is no shade gray uh, shade, uh, gray, gray color shade is being applied now third lightness lightness is also holding the percentage value zero percent is nothing but black 50 percent is nothing but dark or neither dark neither light 100 percent is white so basically when you want to apply alpha so you have to go with hsl a so again alpha concept is same alpha ranges from zero to one is it's not zero is nothing but fully transparent and one is nothing but not transparent pure color last if you want to apply colors in hex values you can specify using hash code so hex is nothing but hash 56 53 whatever color choice you want to have you can search on the google and you can say hex values for colors you can get all the colors from google and test the values over here right so this is the way how we can apply colors in css right now i'll just move ahead and let's have a look the next topic that is nothing but backgrounds and let's have a look on the ppt so the next topic is css background css background is nothing but very first thing 
let's have a look what is the first so for the very first thing is background color just now we have seen how to apply background color right so second thing is how to apply background images so we know sometimes in the background we see some images over the back background images appears and that looks some nice right that gives some uh, effective look to our web page so let's try to add background image and background repeat background attachment background position properties right so so these are the properties that we can have with background let's have a look on the background image first so i'll just just go into my code over here i'll just create new file i'll just save the file first i'm going to save the file with background back round dot html now let's have a boilerplate code first so html and let's add a background image to my body so i want to apply a background image to my full web page let's have let's have a look how we can get that one so before that i'm going to add over here div tag and closing of this div tag i'm going to have hello welcome welcome to background property background property let's save the file now let's try to add the background image so for adding the background image what you have to do is you have to simply use the css property called as an background image so how i can apply the background image by sim i'm going to simply use the internal css i'm going to use the internal css over here and i'll tag over here let's have background image property so before that where to whom i want to apply background that is nothing but body tag i'm going to use it and opening curly braces and closing closing curly braces now let's try to add the background image so to apply a background image we have to use a property called background image so i'm going to include it to apply and background image you have to give an url that is nothing but path so i'm going to specify url is nothing but and in my folder you can see i have one file called d dot extension is j5 so i'll just include this d dot j5 let's save the file and head back to the browser you can see we are getting the images on the background right at the background we are getting the image but you can see my image size uh, is not uh, like acquiring the full width so it is occupying in some portion so default it is repeating itself right so background image is being repeated until that unless the whole browser width is not occupied so basically this is the way how we can apply background image and default background repeat property is Oh, on so basically background repeat property is running in the background so if you want that i don't want to repeat this image so what you can do is you can simply go into this and you can say background repeat property background we'll just write type over here background repeat property in that background repeat property you can specify any direction if you want to repeat so you can say repeat in x direction so basically default property is going to be repeat so i'll just save the file head back to the browser if i refresh the page you can see same output we are getting right so basically when you are going to apply a image in the background background repeat property is always repeat it's on right so basically i want i want to repeat in only x direction save the file head back to the browser and you can see images are being repeated only in one direction that is nothing but in the x direction now i want to have repeat in the y direction save the file head back to the browser refresh the page and you can see images are being repeated in the one direction and that is nothing but my y direction clear so it may be the case you want you don't want to repeat the code or repeat the image for that pick case what you can do is no repeat property you can use so i'm going to say no repeat save the file head back to the browser refresh the page and you can see no repeat property is being applied and your image is being appeared only once on the browser clear i hope you guys are clear with this so you can apply background image and that background image can uh, will have a default background repeat repeat as property so you can apply repeat x repeat y and no repeat property if you want right now 
suppose I don't want this image on the left hand side I want it to be on the right hand side so how I can add that one so for that purpose I have to use the background position property so I'm going to say background position property you can see the intelligence over here background position I'm going to say right save the file head back to the browser and refresh the page you can see my image is on the right hand side now I'll just say right side and on the top I want say head back to the browser refresh the page you can see the image is being appeared on the right hand side and the top so you can specify left top left bottom right bottom etc right you can try it on that now let's have a look on the property called as an attachment what it CSS and I'm going to get the content from the Wikipedia okay okay so i'll just copy a few contents from this place and i'm going to paste it into the code just say ctrl c and i'm going to say ctrl v over here i'm simply, simply going to include the paragraph tag closing of this paragraph tag and this paragraph tag i'm going to include this content and you can see now on the browser if i go i'll just cut this page i'll say refresh over here you can see the content is being applied right and the moment i'm going to scroll the same my image is also disappearing right so what i want is the moment i'm going to scroll down my image should be on the right hand side itself so what you can do is you can say you can use the background background attachment property so how i can use this background attachment i'm going to say background if an attachment and that attachment you can say fixed Save the file, head back to the browser, refresh the page. The moment I'm going to scroll, still my image is on the same position. The image is not changing the position, right? So you can keep the property as background attachment fixed or background attachment to be scrollable. So you can have scroll over here. Scroll, save the file and refresh the page. You can see if I scroll, the image is being scrolled. So basically default property we have scroll if you want to make it fixed so i'm going to make it fixed save the file and check for the ones if i replace the page the image is on the same position image is not changing right now you can see the contents are overlapping the image that will definitely uh, cover but for now let's keep in mind background position property background uh, attachment property you you can use background uh, background attachment property can have value fixed and scroll so scroll is the default value so i'm going to override the value with fixed so if you're going to specify background attachment attachment as in fixed so your image is not going to scroll anywhere right now shorthand property for writing the background so whatever thing we have applied over here Right. Suppose I want to apply a background color. I want to apply an image. I want to apply no repeat. I want to apply this right top. So what we have applied is we have applied this three properties, uh, four properties uh, separated, right? Four, four separate properties. So what you can do is you can apply the same thing in the one liner code. That is nothing but short end property. So I'll just comment this or instead I'll just uh, comment these four properties only. And I'm going to add the shorthand syntax over here. The shorthand, shorthand syntax is nothing but background only. I'm going to say background. Background I'm going to say. In that background I'm going to apply. Hash. FFFFF. FFF stands for. Let's have a look what we'll get output. So FFFF. And I'm going to apply. So basically, we have applied color over here. And now I want to apply an image. I'm going to say URL. Inside the URL, I'm going to specify a path D dot J F I F. We have applied image also. Let's have a look for no repeat. So I'm going to say no repeat. And I want it to be on the right hand side and in the top. Right. Let's save the file, head back to the browser, refresh the content, and you can see it is on the same side because FFF is nothing but your white color. Right? We are getting same output. 
as we have commented this we are getting this the same output for the background as we have applied the white color so let's change it to somewhat red so i'll just apply it well over here save the file head back to the browser if i refresh it so it is applied a blue color okay so you can see the background color is being applied the image is on the same side right it is on the right top uh, image is not repeated and what we have applied in else is no no repeat and write down so we are getting the same output right now let's hi uh, let's move towards the next topic and that is nothing but css borders now what are the css borders are whenever we apply some text i want to highlight it you can apply some borders we have seen table table tags in that table we have applied borders you can change the border types you can change the border colors you can change the border style border width let's have a look on the css borders the so very first we can st start with border styles and border styles after that we will be dealing with the border width we will be dealing with border colors next border styles and that's it let's have a look on the border styles on css borders so very first we'll start with the border style border width border color border shorthand syntax right now uh, i'm going to start off with border style so if i want to apply styling to my border let's have a new file over here control n i'm going to save the file first i'm going to say border css.html and i'm going to have this boilerplate code first now let's apply borders to any div tag suppose this is the div tag i'm applying over here and i'm going to say i am border example over here and let's apply some border over here we know how to apply a border using the inline styling so i'm going to say style is equals to i'm going to say i want to have a border and that border style is going to be i'm going to say border style i want to have solid we have already tried the solid let's save the file i'm going to say copy file path let's have a look for the same and you can see solid border is being applied to my content right solid border solid type of border is being applied to my content and let's have a look for other styles that those we have in the borders now let's copy and paste same code for at least two times let's apply solid let's just remove the solid i'll apply it dotted we have dotted and we can have dashed dash type we have also we also have and i'm going to say double double and i can apply groove groove we can have reach so i'm going to say r i d g e reach so next i'm going to say inset next i'm going to say outset and i'm going to say next control c control v control v over here and i'm going to say style to be none i don't want to apply any border so you can specify none also and i'm going to say hidden save the file so these are all uh, style border styles we have got so first is so that we are familiar with solid dotted dash double group reach inset outset none and hidden so let's have a look on the browser what we get in the output so you can see we are getting some output the very first thing is dotted second third is dashed fourth is double next is reach so nee no, this one is group right group this is nothing but reach inset outset none border none and hidden okay so you can have a look on this so what is happening over here is it is okay let's add br tag over here so it will be more visible for us okay so at least for the first three we'll just add br tag yes we can see right so first is solid second is dotted third is dashed for uh, next is double groove then we can see rich inset outset 
border none and hidden so this these are the ways how we can apply borders so whatever type of border you want to apply you can pick it up and you can apply it now we if you want to have mixed border suppose i want to i want to have solid in the top um dashed in the right dotted in the bottom and groove in the left so how i can write that one so i have to have this mixed type so i'm going to add this br tag over here first let's have this control c from this place and control v over here so i'm border example for mixed type i'm going to say mixed type so let's have the mix one so i'm going to remove border style hidden to the suppose in the top i want dotted in the right hand side i want dashed in the bottom i want let's take solid in the left I want double let's save the file head back to the browser and let's refresh the page once and you can see top you can see your dotted right hand side in the bottom you can see solid in the left and see the double right so this may be the interview question that can i apply multiple uh, borders on the single element yes so answer for to this question is yes you can apply so how i can apply is using the mix uh, styling so dotted dash solid double right now next thing is border width to apply a border width you can specify in some formats so what are those formats are you can specify in the pixels you can specify in the point format you can specify in the centimeter you can specify in the em now what is this em is em full form is nothing but eye movement so you, you we have got one more unit called as an em you can use em also so basically one em is going to be 16 pixels so instead of writing in the form of pixels you can use em one em is nothing but 16 pixels so let's have a look how we can apply border width so there are other ways also that you can apply border width so there is other way is you can apply border width as thin medium and thick let's add over here the div tag i'm going to say control v over here instead of border style hidden i'm going to apply uh, solid over here let's apply solid over here and i'm going to apply border width so i'm going to say border hyphen width and i'm going to apply width as medium let's have medium over here let's save the file and i'm going to go back to the browser you can refresh the page and you can see border width is being applied some medium so i'll just make it First, I'll add BR tag over here. Save the file, head back to the browser. To face the page, you can see border is being applied, which is of thick or medium. Let's apply for the thick. So, I'll just replace this medium with thick. Save the file, head back to the browser. To face the page, you can see some thick border is being applied. Okay. Now, I can, so I'm going to say thin width and let's finish. And you can see the thin border is being applied right so you can apply border width in some formats just like as in pixels point format centimeter format eye movement format so em is a unit and thin medium and thick format next suppose i want to have border width in the top something else in the right something else in the bottom something else in the left something else the way we have applied the borders border styles top dotted right dashed bottom solid and the left hand side it is double so in that same way we can apply border width in the top different in the right different left different and the bottom different let's see how to add the different different width border width to my uh, content so i'll just copy the content over here control v let's try to add br tag first so that that we can have it so let's try to add horizontal rule also let's have a look what it makes a difference if i scroll down you can see horizontal rule or horizontal row is being added over here now what i'm going to do is i want to have some mixed format of uh, having this format um, border width so i'll just write over here border width and just remove this thin first now i'm going to have this 25 px over here for the top and 11 px for the right 5 px in the bottom and let's take now 6 7 px in the left 
save the file, head back to the browser, refresh the page once, and you will see top we have got 25 px, right we have got some px, bottom we have got some px, in the left we have got some px. So you can apply uh, different types of border width the way you want to apply, right? Now let's try to change the color of your border. So if I want to change the color, so you can simply have over here one more property. So let's do to add one more property, you have to separate these properties using semicolon, right? So I'm going to add a border color over here. So I'm going to say border hyphen color and that color I'm going to say red. Just save the file and head back to the browser and let's have the border color in the red, right? Now, what if you want to have in the top green color, in the right blue color, in the bottom yellow and in the left pink? Let's have that one also. So I'm going to copy the content from this place, control C. I'm going to have this over here. I'm going to add very first an horizontal rule and the BR first so that we can analyze our code. And I'm going to add the content over here. Right. So very first thing is border style. I'm going to keep solid border color. I want to apply different colors. So I'm going to remove this. Okay, and just keep it thin and I want to apply one more styling that is nothing but my border color so I'm going to say border color I want to apply a red color I want to apply red color in the top green color in the right black I'll not apply black color I'll apply yellow color in the bottom and apply pink color in the left let's save the file and head back to the browser if I refresh the page and if I scroll down you can see uh, actually, we are not able to get exact. Uh, we are not able to see, right? So I'll just add medium instead, or I, I'll just add thick over here. Save the file, head back to the browser, refresh the page, and you can see red color is being applied in the top, green color is applied in the right, yellow color is being applied in the bottom, and pink color is applied in the left, right? Now this is the way how you can apply border colors. Now if you want to apply individual sides, right? If you want to apply individual sides, so in that case, what you can do is border top style to be dotted, border top right to be solid. So you can apply some points like that. Suppose if you want to have style individual sides of borders. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more time uh, HR and I'm going to have this br again and i'm going to include this div tag and i'm going to say i am uh, individual in the individual sides of border so when you want to apply individual sides of border in that case you can have this syntax now suppose i want to apply on the top only so in that case what i'm going to do is using the in inline styling i'm using the style attribute over here and i'm going to say border hyphen top hyphen style and i want to have dotted let's head back to the browser refresh the page and you can see dotted border is being applied on the top i want double on the bottom so i'm going to say i'm going to copy the content again control c i'm going to paste it over here and i'm going to say border bottom style so i'm going to say bottom and i'm going to say instead of dotted i'm going to say double save the file Head back to the browser and refresh the page. Now you can see I'm um, individual sides of border that I'm applying double in the border, bottom, right? So you can try it out for the right and the left, right? So we'll just move ahead and we'll just have the shorthand syntax for the border. So these these are the way how we can apply the borders. So we have applied three properties: border style, border width, border color. And if you want to have individual sides, so in that case you can go with the bottom border bottom style border top style border uh, left style etc so what you can do is you can have border shorthand syntax so simply i'm going to add div over here and that div i'm going to write border shorthand 
ten tags and closing of this div tag. Inside the div tag, I'm going to specify this style, and that style I'm going to write. I want to apply a border over here. Instead of color, I want to apply border over here, which is of thickness two px, which will be solid, and I want to specify a red color. Instead of red, I'll just go with blue. Just save the file, head back to browser, refresh the page, and you can see blue color border is being applied, which is of thickness two px and which is solid, right? So this is the shorthand syntax if you want to apply a border. Instead of writing three syntaxes or three properties, CSS properties, you can go with the single shorthand syntax for the CSS, applying a border. Right now, if you want to have the rounded borders, so in that case, instead of sharpened borders, you can apply rounded borders. So you can say border radius over here, border hyphen radius, and you can specify the radius in the form of pixels. So I'm going to specify instead 5px, just save the file, head back to the browser, and refresh the page. And you can see the corners, the sharpened corners are not turned towards this rounded corners. Let's increase this to 15px save the file and refresh the page and you can see the borders are turns towards this rounded shape right